Let's go to the fourth one. The law of Titan. The law of Titan. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 to 10. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. What did he do? To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. That's Titan, a tenth, one tenth. First being translated king of righteousness and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. So you see, this Melchizedek was the Old Testament adumbration of figure of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Go on. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, who is Levi? The grandson, the great grandson of Abraham, who received the priesthood, have a, a, com a commandment to receive tithe from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. Let's go on. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithe from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Yeah, mortal men, that is on earth, mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witness that he lives. The dear there is heaven. So you see, see, you see how relevant titan is. He say here on earth, it is human priests that will receive tithe. But in heaven, God receives it. So you see, it's not a New Testament or Old Testament thing. It's a law in the kingdom. Please put the scripture. Let's finish up. Even Levi, who receives tithe, paid tithe through Abraham, so to speak. For he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him so that transaction that happened between melchizedek and abraham in genesis 14 you can read genesis 14 when you go back home what happened there was not just abraham giving something to melchizedek no melchizedek represented jesus christ it was jesus christ in the old testament and abraham represented everyone that would be justified by faith and the bible says levi of whom God now raised the Levitical priesthood. Levi was in Jacob, who was in Isaac, who was in Abraham, when Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek. To further cement the law of tithing. Long given before the Old Testament came into being. That transaction happened 400 plus years later. Or before even the, the law came. 400 years plus later, the Lord came to Moses and said, okay, let the tribe of Levi be priests unto me and let them receive tithes, a tenth of all that have blessed the people. But even before that happened, 400 years ago, God had instituted tithing to be a kingdom law, not an Old Testament or New Testament law. Why? When Abraham paid his tithe. Remember, the Bible says Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. So everything Abraham did was on the basis of faith. And now we are all in Christ Jesus, sons of Abraham. So who lied to you that you, can't, you must not pay tithe? That's why I, I decided that I will not read Old Testament. It's New Testament I will read the tithe from. Your tithe is the token of your spiritual circumcision. Your tithe is the token of your redemption. The Bible says we have been called out of many tribes and nations and tongues. Just the way you separate that one tenth from the whole part. That's how God has separated us from the world and called us to himself. We have been redeemed. So the institution of tithing is not about the money. God, does God need the money? No. It is a physical token to make you remember that you too have been separated out of the world unto God. For you have become the Lord's portion. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 32 verse 9, it says, for the Lord's portion is Israel. 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 Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know I'm preaching like this because one, oh, a satanic doctrine, of course the Bible speaks of the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. 
You know, you have to be careful when you know too much. You have to be careful. The Bible says knowledge puffs off, but love edifies. When I see the way you preach and teach, I will know whether you truly love and you want to edify or not. Nobody should deceive you. I am a tighter by the grace of God. I've been tightening for at least, I can remember, over 10 years. This ministry tights every month. In fact, once they collect the offerings and whatever you give there, the first thing they do is separate the tithes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I'm not preaching this because I'm collecting. I've never, I'm not receiving any allowance or salary from the ministry. Not a feeding allowance, nothing. No, absolutely nothing. So I'm preaching it from a free standpoint. Not because I'm collecting any money. Tithing is a powerful law. Aside from the benefits that follows it, it is a, it is a commandment in the kingdom. You see, in, George, in Joshua, when they went to invade Jericho, God told them, destroy everything. Don't take anything from Jericho. You know why? Because Jericho was the first nation that they were to conquer in the promised land. Jericho was meant to be the tithe of Canaan. The, the Bible not say, that's why we started from honor. They say, honor God with your substance and the first. So you see, tithe is not just even in the amount. It's in the first. That as when you, something comes to you, the first thing you take out is God. And you honor him with it. Jericho was supposed to be the tithe to God. Destroy them completely. Don't take anything. But somebody stole something. And you see, every time, because tithe is the Lord's portion. Anytime you take the Lord's portion, it becomes a cost to you. It is a sacrifice pleasing to God, but when it goes to you, it's a curse. And I don't need to tell you what, how it affected them. There are many people whose finances are tied today because they, they avoid that law. And you see, one thing about laws is whether you know it or not, whether you do it or not, it will serve its cause. Yesterday we were in Bill. After the, month, the minister's session, I was praying for people and then I met a lady. I think you were the one who told me. She, uh, she said business. As I was about to lay hands on us, the Holy Spirit said, tight. And I asked her, do you tight? She kept quiet. So why would the Holy Spirit tell me about tight being necessary for a believer if it is not true? Somebody who has been eating tight of people for a long time, collecting tight from a state government, after he has eaten and satisfied, now brings up a a message and say don't pay tight you don't need to understand what I'm saying no you, it was titan that built your church titan that opened your TV station titan did everything for you now you are rich you are eating tight now say don't pay tight it, yes return it sell the church sell the TV station return everything back let us know with due respect I didn't call anybody's name amen I, I, but it's the truth no let's not, let's not deceive ourselves I'm not preaching this to you because I'm, I want you to give let me tell you the truth let me, tell, let me be very honest with you the, we have, the collections we make every Sunday has never been enough to run one service the finance people there at the back they know you don't know how much you see, see it as you sit down here comfortable. People are streaming all over the world online. You don't know how much goes in for, to run one service. So we are not preaching because we need money. If it was because we were living by the tithe and by the grace of God, SGNI does not survive on tithe and offering. But let's preach it because it's the truth. Honor God with your tithing. It's a law. The less is blessed by the greater. When Abraham paid that tithe to Melchizedek, Melchizedek blessed him. Here was the blessing. Genesis 14 verse 12. The Bible says, and Melchizedek blessed him and said this to him. Give us that scripture. Let me show you the blessing. So they also took Lot Abraham's. Go to verse 20. Verse 20. This was where God now fulfilled his promise by telling, by giving Abraham the whole earth. And blessed be God most high. Go to verse 19. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, Abraham, 
of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. I told you blessing means commending creation to align together for one person. It was at this point that God gave the whole earth to Abraham. Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven. If I'm blessing you in the name of the one that is possessor of heaven and earth, I'm simply saying, I now make you a possessor of the whole earth. That's why even when Lazarus died in the New Testament and went to hell, part of hell was given to Abraham. Abraham was the landlord. They called it paradise. They called it Abraham's bosom. Is that not true? Don't allow anybody to deceive you. Be a titan. Honor God with your tithe. Make sure that every time God blesses you, you separate it. Let me ask you, even if you eat plus that tithe, has it ever been enough for you? Will it ever be enough for you? So why are you now struggling with God because of 5,000, 10,000? A cattle on a thousand hill belongs to him. How much is a cow? To pay 10,000 naira tithe, you are now debating with God and doing like this. No one. If you are into business, find a way for your company to be paying tight. It's a powerful law. Dr. Mike Modok, many of you will know him. He said there was a time in the administrator were going through a lot of financial crisis and he was wondering where the problem was coming from. You know, he's a wisdom man now. He obeys all the laws. Then he now realized that they didn't tight for some time. He called the secretary, say, said, do you want to kill me? He said, now all the tights were owing, go and pay. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring ye all the tithes into my house that they may be meat, food in my house. And try me. The first time God is saying a man should test him. He said, try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. He goes further to say, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. The devourer is the devil infiltrating your finances. You gather but you don't know what to, you use it to do. You can't even keep tra track of your expenditure per month. You are earning 500,000 but it looks like you are earning 50,000. It's as if money becomes useless in your hand. You are holding money but it's paper in the spirit. Why? There is a devourer around. That devourer has some legitimate access into your life. Start being a tighter and rebuke the devourer out of your life. If you are with me, say amen. amen. 